Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to perform market basket analysis using IBM Modeler. Even before I proceed to demonstrate how to perform market basket analysis in IBM Modeler, may I request you to subscribe to my channel and like and share my videos. Let's first begin by looking at the source data. The source data is present in Excel. You can see here, this is the data of customer transactions that we have. There are certain important columns like card ID. You can think of it like uh, customer ID or value. Then we have payment method, gender, homeowner, income, age. I will not be using any of these variables for analysis. My analysis will be focused on the products. Let's look at some of the products that are available. Fruit wedge, fresh meat, dairy, canned wedge, so on and so forth. There are 11 different products here. Each of these products are dichotomous variables, meaning they can take only two values. F means false, which means that the first customer has not purchased fruit wedge. Similarly, if you see T, it means true. The first customer has purchased fresh meat here. You can see under dairy product, it again says T, which means that the first customer has purchased dairy products as well. What is the question that we are trying to explore here? We are interested in finding out whether there is any association in the purchase of the products. For example, there may be a customer who may buy dairy products as well as, let us say, fruit wedge. There could be an association between beer and fish. Many times when we go to the shop, there is a tendency amongst customers to buy oil and salt or let's say belt and socks. We are interested in finding out whether there is any evidence in the data for us to believe that two products are associated or not. This can be answered, this question can be answered using the a priori algorithm that is present in IBM Modeler. With this background, let me take you to IBM Modeler. Those of you who are not familiar with IBM Modeler, this is the canvas which we will be using to construct the stream. And below, you can see different palettes like sources, record options, field options. And under each of these palettes, you see different icons that are present. Let's begin by loading the source data. How do we load the source data? Let's click on the option sources. The third icon from the left is var file. Let me double click on this particular option. Why do we need this particular icon? This particular icon is useful when you're trying to load a CSV file. Since the source data is in the form of CSV, I will be using this particular icon to load the CSV file. You can see here the icon has appeared in the canvas. Let me double click on this a new window pops up here under the file option. I can specify the location of the file from where I will be loading the source data. This is the radio icon. Let me click on the radio icon. I'll choose the file baskets1n. This is a file which is provided under the sample section by default from IBM. If you're interested in knowing the location of the file, you can see here under program files, IBM, SPSS, Modeler 18.0, and then demos. IBM itself provides a lot of files to work with. I'm working with one of the sample files, basket 1n. Let me click on open. I'll also be sharing this data set in the description below. Those of you who are interested in working on this particular data set, please feel free to download the data set and you can replicate the same analysis. All credit to IBM Modeler. 
Now, you can see here, it generates the preview of some of the customers and their transactions. If you want to have a better look, you can just click on the option preview. You can see here, IBM Modeler displays the top 10 rows for this particular data set. I'll click on OK. OK again. Now, the data set has been loaded. What next? The next step would be to specify the variable properties. How do we specify the variable properties in IBM Modeler? You can see here, there's a palette which is called as field options. Let me click on this particular feature, field options. The second option here is what is called as the type node. Let me double click on the type node. This type node is very, very important when you want to specify the variable type. You can see here, card ID, value, payment method, gender, homeowner, income, age. I will not be using any of these variables in the analysis. So the role that I will specify is none. They will not be used for analysis. If you look at the bottom 11 variables, which are all about the products and uh, which, are, which are all about the product uh, details, what I would like to do is specify the role as both. I will not be using them as target or input. I can specify this as both. This is particularly applicable in market basket analysis. Right now, IBM Modeler is struggling to read the values. So what I'll do is I'll click on the read values option. And you can see here, now IBM Modeler is able to read the values that are present for each of the variable. It says T, which means true or false. So we've been able to specify the variable properties. Let me click on apply and then OK. So at this stage, we have loaded the data set and we have specified the variable properties. If you want to see the entire data set, you can go to the output palette and then click on the table node. Right click on the table node. The last option is run. Let me maximize the window. You can see here, this is the source data which we will be using to run the MBA or market basket analysis. Let me click on OK. So far, we are ready with the data set. We have specified the variable properties. Now we are all set to execute the a priori algorithm, which is typically used to perform the market basket analysis. To attach the a priori algorithm or a priori node, you can click on the modeling palette. To the left side, you see a lot of options like analytic server, classification, and association. Let me click on association. And the very first item here is a priori. I'll be double clicking on the a priori. Let me drag this node here. Right click on this and use the connect option to connect to the a priori algorithm. So as I, can, uh, as I told you, this is a stream. We have loaded the data here. We have specified the variable properties. This will be fed into the a priori algorithm. So 11 fields will be used to perform market basket analysis. Let me right click and go ahead and choose the option run. The model has been executed. We are not getting any error. You can see here, this is what is called as the model nugget. What you need to do to see the results is right click on the model nugget and choose the option browse. Let me maximize the window. If you want to see the entire output, you have to choose this particular option, which is called as show the criteria menu. Let me click on the drop down menu and choose the option show all. As you can see here, there are a lot of details. I'll not be covering all of these details in this particular video, but some of the important features is what I'll be covering. 
first you see what is called as the consequent and then you see what is called as the antecedent. Antecedent refers to what the customer purchases first. Consequent, as the name itself suggests, refers to what the customer purchases given that he has already bought the items in the antecedent. For example, a priori algorithm has found out that customers who buy beer and canned veg tend to buy frozen meal. Similarly, customers who buy beer and frozen meal can be expected to buy canned veg. If you look at the third rule, customers who buy frozen meal and canned veg tend to buy beer. Now, there are a lot of metrics here, but I'd like to draw your at attention to three important metrics. First, what is called as support. Secondly, we also have what is called as confidence. Then we have what is called as lift. What is the difference between support, confidence, and lift? Let's understand this one by one. Let's first focus on the support percent. Support percent points to the antecedent. You can see here, the support percent is 16.7. Support indicates how popular a product is amongst all the product transactions. It simply means in this data set of 1000 records, 16.7% of the customers purchased beer and canned veg. I repeat, 16.7% of the customers purchased beer and canned veg. The question is, out of these customers who have purchased beer and canned veg, what is the percentage of people who have purchased frozen meal? To answer this question, we need to look at what is called as the rule support. The rule support says 14.6%. What does this mean? The rule support says out of the 16.7% of the people who have purchased beer and canned veg, 14.6% of customers have purchased frozen meal. You have another important statistic here, which is called as confidence. What is confidence? Confidence is the likelihood of purchasing both the products that are present in antecedent as well as frozen meal. Here, there is a 87% confidence that you can have and claim that people who buy beer and canned veg tend to buy frozen meal. Higher the confidence, better it is. So there is a 87% confidence that people who buy beer and canned veg tend to buy frozen meal. The last metric which I'd like to explain here is about lift. What is this lift? Lift is a measure that helps the store managers to decide product placement on the aisle. There are three possibilities for lift. You can either get a lift value greater than one, in which case it means that the items A and B are independent of each other. If the lift value is exactly equal to one, it means that the items A and B are independent. On the other hand, if you get a lift value bigger than one, you can say that the two products are positively correlated. Since we have a lift value of 2.8, which is clearly greater than one, which means that there is a positive correlation between purchase of beer, canned veg, and frozen meal. So that's how we can interpret the lift value. The last possibility for lift is a lift value less than one. If the lift value is less than one, it means that the two items are negatively correlated. To summarize, what is lift? Lift simply indicates the preference to buy the items in the RHS given that a customer has already bought items in the LHS. So with this, I have come to the end of 
market basket analysis. This is part one of market basket analysis, wherein I'm talking about a priori algorithm and, and some of the important metrics which can be used to decipher, which can be used to understand product affinity analysis. If you have liked this video, I request you to hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching this video. Have a great day.